into. Besides which, Elvis in this case might have resented it, and he wanted, might have said, Al, you've had it, goodbye, get out of here. And I didn't want to do that. And uh, I didn't realize how intensely he was involved in whatever he did. So then I got bored by this shot and eventually climbed up on those, those railings and became a little bit Hollywoody. And I was shooting over her shoulder. You think he noticed me? No, he's focused. <laughs> and then, then, I, then, uh, then I said to myself, my goodness, uh, how do I get to that landing? Uh, way down there, so I have front lighting. I'm thinking like a photographer, front lighting, back lighting, get closer. Uh, you know, uh, Robert Capper once said, unfortunately, he stepped on a landmine in Indochina and got killed. But before he got killed, he said, uh, if your pictures are boring and uninteresting, you're not close enough. Get closer. I was thinking about that. I, I wanted to get close. You know, you can get to a point where you just have their nose in their mouth, and it's too close. Uh, so, uh, so I took on the, 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 you know, the uh, character of the maintenance man. I said, excuse me, coming through, like I was part of a building up there. So I'm squeezing past these people, and I'm settling, I'm settling down on the landing there, and I've got a nice frame. And now I'm waiting for something to happen. So I lock myself in, elbows to my knees, you know, bone to bone, bone to floor, thinking like a tripod. Who thinks like a tripod <laughs> except available light photographers? And so, so all of a sudden she says to him, I'll bet you can't kiss me, Elvis. And she sticks out her tongue. And he says, I'll bet you I can. And he sticks out his tongue. And he comes in for a landing. And I didn't realize till a week later when I developed the film that he really missed the mark. He bent her nose. <laughs> and so he backs up again, comes in a second time, and lands perfectly. The whole thing took a tenth of a second. Now, uh, Diane Keaton, who was the first one to ever buy the kiss picture from me, you'll see it later, uh, she said, that's the most erotic photograph I've ever seen. Well, what is she? I, I, I take her word at it. She published it in French Vogue. Uh, because I gave it to me. And she indicated this is the most erotic picture ever. Well, okay, I take her word at it. And, uh, and so, but I didn't plan it. I don't think Elvis even planned it. He tried to relax this woman all day long. He used various techniques, and I'll give up the secret right now to this audience what he did. First, he messed up her hair. She had a hairspray on, uh, and that didn't exactly ingratiate him to her. But then he tried to choke her by actually putting his arms and hands around her in the car and mockingly choking her. And uh, ultimately, she allowed him to give her a kiss. All right, fine. So it, it's all well that ends well. So let's see what happens. Uh, oh, yes. We're, we're, hold me tight. This is called hold me tight. I'm now up on those uh, railings. I'm shooting over a shoulder, I figured, well, Al, your first year in photography, you are Hollywood. So I'm there, but it's available light. It's just 150 watt bulb over the head, and the little window light near dusk is giving me the lighting. My exposure here probably is a fifth of a second. Now, Kodak always tells you shoot at least 30th of a second. Otherwise, it'll be blurry. All right, fine. So we broke those rules. Now he's whispering to her softly. Uh, and every every picture has to have a title. And then now he he bends her nose. Does he bend her nose? Yes, he bends her nose. I didn't realize that until after I developed the shot. And now I, you see, now we got front lighting. Now I'm on the landing. And uh, and finally, uh, they both stick out their tongues. <laughs> and I didn't realize I got this shot again until I. But but I knew that it couldn't get much better. So I decided to again walk past them, taking the position of the maintenance man and going to the main stage where the performances were really taking place on stage. And then, then the girls in the audience, there were 3,000 of them, a couple of fellas and about five or six police, make sure that there's no trouble. And, uh, and the girls would start going, we want Elvis, we want Elvis. And then of course Elvis then appears 
and eventually he closes the show for 20 minutes, and that was his work for the day. So now, this is backstage at the Mosque Theater, at the end, well, 20 minutes from the end of the first performance, uh, there were two, so I can figure this is about 6 o'clock in the evening. There was still light. Now he's on stage, and uh, I call this kneeling at the mosque. You might want to ask the question, why is the place called the mosque theater? Well, it was built by the Shriners back in the 1920s, and uh, the Shriners had all these Arabic symbols on the, on the architecture of the outside of the building, and they ran into trouble in the Depression, and they had to sell the building to the city because they couldn't keep up with the mortgage. And so now the city owned the mosque theater. I think they changed the name of it now. But they would book it to the various producers who would want to book a theater, you know, to and you put your person into the box office and then you make some money. Uh, may I um, yes. um, first uh, get a time check? We have about ten after. Ten and we want to give you all an opportunity to ask any questions about where um, the program ends at two thirty. Is that right? It's two o'clock. It's two o'clock. Twelve thirty. <laughs> it's, it's been amazing, and for me, an indication of the brilliance of Albert Heimer, and I know I must be embarrassing you, I, I apologize for that. But there's a reason, again, why the Smithsonian Institution got these series of um, phot photog photographs were important to the story. Um, you can see it. You can see it with these. And when you go inside the galleries, you'll see the nature of his ability to capture image through the darkness. For me, that backstage flirtation um, in this public release realization, it's for me perfect Elvis. He was able to give to his audiences truth, honesty, freedom to feel. He really was revolutionary. He really was in charge of his world. No matter what later years seem to imply, because of his use of uh, substances. This is an artist of important American um, credibility. He, in him, embodies ideas of freedom, integration, and the right to be heard. Are there any questions from the floor? Well, do you want to go through the rest of the pictures fast? Um, I, well, I'd like to get can we get yeah. some questions right, and keep going through? Questions. Here's there's a question. A, there's about 30 more photographs. So. Um, so you said you didn't know him before this. No. Um, so two things. One, did you really get us, you know, have real conversations with him, or did you always no. stay in the background? No. And secondly, did you ever have encounters with him again afterwards? Only, only on September 22nd uh, of 1958, the day he shipped out to uh, Bremerhaven in, in, in the Army, he was at the Brooklyn port of embarkation with about 6,000 other troops who were being loaded onto a uh, troop ship, uh, what was it, Randolph, the USS Randolph. And, uh, and uh, then a year later, he met Priscilla Presley over there, a 14-year-old kid who he lady married. Um, but uh, now, Elvis, instead of being the rebel, was being used by the army after he had his hair shorn, so he had a crew cut and he was being used by them for recruiting purposes where he had a press conference in front of about 250 media people, television, et cetera, newspapers, magazines, still fit our so on. And, uh, and, and army recruiting posters behind him. So now that he had short hair and no longer had the sideburns, he was a good guy. Uh, when he wiggled around and had sideburns with long hair, he was a bad guy. So it just depends on your hair. <laughs> yeah. Did he ever see any of these pictures? I wouldn't know. I wouldn't really know. I think um, perhaps Ann Fokino occasionally showed him one or two, but uh, he was so busy doing new things that I don't. I I never showed any of them to him. Uh, I know we put out a magazine which was a, a one shot at the time. People were calling me to produce one shots, meaning. The whole magazine is on one personality. And the first one to ever have that done to them was James Dean. The second one was Elvis Presley. And, uh, and uh, well, 
I mean, then I found that people were interested. We put out a magazine called The Amazing Elvis Presley. I, I formed a company uh, using my sister-in-law's name, Renal Corporation, Re Rene and Al, Renal. Uh, and, and I said, let's put out a magazine. I've got thousands of pictures. People are calling me, why don't we do it? So we got a staff together, about five, six people, and then we actually distributed 400,000 magazines till I realized that distribution companies were crooked. And, and that got me into my first lawsuit. Uh, I thought I'd be rich in my first year in photography, but I did get into my first lawsuit, and we did make $5,000, which had to be distributed four ways. There was a question there, yeah. you, Miss? Yeah, uh, I did have an opportunity to see the exhibit, and there was one photograph that just stunned me. It's actually on the pamphlet. Oh, that one. Could you Start. talk about this one? Well, we could, it's the last picture in this slide. It is? Yes. Yeah. Oh, do talk about it. It's a it's brilliant stunning. moment. Well, it, I, call that, I call that photograph Starburst. Yeah. Um, you see, photograph is made up of several components, and you don't always have control over those components. Now, in that particular case, Starburst, the, the star is bursting on the scene. I'm taking this literally, like Elvis is bursting on the scene. But, but here's what Kodak tells you never to do. Never have lights go directly into your lens because it'll fog your, it'll 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 fog your frame and it'll cause all kinds of mischief in the shutter area. Well, that's precisely what gave the image a mood. Some fan, way down in the audience, decided to set up her, probably her, because it was mostly women, her her. Fox Brownie flashbulb, just exactly in sync with my shutter. And I was up on stage. So now all of the people in front of her had backlighting to them. The light got into my shutter, and within the shutter area, it flared. So you, you, couldn't, you couldn't do that if you tried. So you have to be a little bit lucky. You have to have your frame set Hopefully Elvis will be doing something interesting in the foreground and you, you're getting enough separation and this highlighting of the hair of the heads is a pure accident because I have about ten photographs of that. It's the only one where the actual flash bulb went off. Yes, there are many flash bulbs that went off, but not in sync with your shutter being open at precisely the same time. You talked about being surprised when you saw that, this magical moment. You just, yeah. you, again, there it is. You well, are you are open to the possibilities, and because of your artistry, they obviously come to you. That is amazing. Well, you, 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 uh, if you, if you set your frame, and you, you, you see that what, what, what the, 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 the system that I used at the time was, I was trying to move a story along. So if I had, if I had a lot of close-up portraits, well, I wasn't going to focus on close-up portraits anymore. Then I'd set the frame, and, uh, and I'd wait about six, seven, eight shots in the, with that frame, and then I'd get tired of that, and I'd move maybe to the front of the stage, shooting up. I might go to a wider angle lens. In, in other words, to give a variety of, of imagery and framing to the scene. After all, look at this room. There are no photographs here. There's no borders. You, you make borders on, on still photographs. You decide, is it a vertical shot or is it a horizontal shot? Is it, is it a, a close-up of somebody's head or is it a wide shot which includes everybody from there to there? These are, these are things you decide. There, there, there's, no, there's no frames here. The first photographs ever taken were round because the lenses were round. But then they said, well, look, the lenses are falling off near the edge and it's getting a little fuzzy. So some brilliant mind came along and said, let's frame it off so that we get rid of the, 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 the out of focus or soft focus stuff and we'll get everything more sharp towards the middle of the lens. So now you had to make a decision. Uh, you had to make a vertical or a horizontal or a diagonal if you want to be that kind of photographer. So, uh, so that's... Uh, you made brilliant decisions. You made odd decisions, and Elvis was there to help you along. May we go first? Thank you. Um, number one, how old were you when you were doing I was this? I was 26 years old. You were 26? Elvis was 21. And 
And what was your training? Because you My were, training? your sense of using the natural light well, and composition. The, the first training is curiosity. Second training is uh, interest. You have to be interested in people, otherwise you're photographing still life, you know? I, I mean, uh, the, the tricky thing about photographing people is you never know how they're going to react and you have to adjust yourself to a human being who's got a mind of their own. If you're dealing with still life, well, the flowers don't care, the fruit bowl doesn't care, uh, and if you're dealing with models, they're usually being paid so that, you, you know, they'll do what you want, so they're like mannequins. But if you're going out there and you, you're you taking a, a developing situation that you don't know what's going to happen, you have to be fast on your feet and thinking and reacting to a, a moving story that is, is ever-changing. And the only thing that I concern myself with is, is he involved? But I didn't, I didn't consciously know what I was doing. It's only later on I realized that when people are involved, I don't care if you're doing the dishes. You don't want to break the dishes, so you're paying attention to the dish. But if I tell you, go wash that dish, and then you wash the dish, and then you say, what else do you want me to do? No. You've got to, uh, like you're, you're cooking, or you're, 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 uh, you're, you know, if you want to do pictures of your children, well, then get down on your children's level so that you're not shooting down at them like a grown-up, and get close enough, and let them be involved in either doing something silly or having a game, and then, and then the emotion comes from within them. You're not pasting it on top of them. I think so we have we to add, Al, that at this time, your decision, again, this is 1956, your decision to be in the moment, to not put somebody in the studio and get the lighting all perfect. I couldn't put them in the studio. You are part of the cutting edge of photographic. Well, thank you. But you are. Well, That's good. why these hold up. This is modern art. You've already talked about in the moment. This is cutting edge in the 20th century. It's as revolutionary as what Elvis is doing on stage. Well, let me put it this way. To be a little more modest, there was a fella, and if, you're an, if you want to be a photo historian, go look up the work of, um, of um, mm, uh, 1920s of uh, who the devil? Oh my goodness! <laughs> who who? Name it. Tell me. Solomon. Solomon. You got it. who's the who's the uh, sorry? Uh, Eric Solomon. Uh, yeah, Eric Solomon. Uh, he he used a unipod, and he went down and did a lot of work with the League of Nations. Beautiful, beautiful work. Uh, except of course it wasn't Elvis Presley. Um, uh, on the other hand, he unfortunately got himself killed in the concentration camp during the Nazi regime. Uh, but his work uh, in the 1920s uh, foreshadows anything I did. And then, of course, there were a whole bunch of uh, uh, Farm Security Administration folks like Dorothea Lange and, uh, and uh, uh, Rothstein and, and uh, even uh, uh, Margaret Burke White, yes. But I don't know if she was part of the uh, Farm Security Administration. Uh, yeah, there, there, there were predecessors to myself. But, you know, you can only do things uh, when you're old enough to, to get a certain amount of freedom. And there's always the, the problem between commercial work and doing your own work. Most of my good stuff was where I gave myself assignments. I mean, if, if, if I got an assignment, the person who paid me expected to get certain certain results. Now, in the case of Anne Folkino, she said, "Give me something I can use on the back of album covers, and and also for publicity handouts." Well, she got what she wanted, but I also got what I wanted, which was the little moments that become important in our in our in our lives that are never recorded. I mean, it's it's. Uh, uh, and, and, that's your and, taste, and that's important. Did you still have a question, yeah. sir? Yeah, you were talking before about uh, making decisions, and I think you said you, that you took some 2,500 photographs yes. of Elvis. Can you talk a little bit about the process of selecting the 40 or so images that are in the show? Oh, you mean, could, you know, there's not 40 images, you see? There's 56 images. 56 that, images. I, I decided since it's Elvis 56, it's got to be. 56. And if it was Elvis 58, well, uh, there's a fellow by the name of uh, 
Uh, it was a curatorial. Uh, it was a curatorial yeah, team that yeah, included, included Chris Murray, Amy Henderson from National Portrait Gallery, um, Lauren Perry from National Portrait Gallery, and myself and Al. Um, the idea of the 56 photographs, and there really are 56 photographs. 40 a large no, print. I saw that there was a yes. And yeah, so that was that was uh, Alfred's <laughs> idea. 1956, 56 yes, photographs. Yes. And so we made a choice to choose images that were metaphoric for many of the photographs in um, Alfred's over 2,000 uh, shots of Elvis. And in all honesty, uh, to we wanted to do the monumental prints. We need to travel them safely. We need to house them, travel them safely. Money does matter. So we, how can we do that consciously, afford it, um, and, and do service by the story that Al told? And so that's why the 40, it, it, a combination of pieces. But always, the images were, were chosen to make a statement. This crescendo that Alfred uh, covers was very important to have the loneliness and then the crescendo up. So that when we're in, when we're in Richmond, the crescendo is rising, and then with that climax with the sunbirds, right. perfect. To end it there was perfect. It could have ended a lot of different ways, but it was. It, it, we felt we were respecting the, the the pathway that you had laid out for us when you talked about your photographs and what you discovered in that moment when you said to Elvis, "Mind if I tag along?" And he said, "Okay." Well, I mean, you see, he knew he was going to become famous. Nobody else knew it. And how do you prove to people in the future that you're going to become famous if you don't document what you do? And later on, when you become famous, you see, way back when I, well, do you have any visual proof of what you did way back when? Well, that's the function of the photographer. They store these, these images of the past, keep them in shoe boxes and stuff, and, and print them in the future. In my case, uh, it's now 54 years, and I'm still printing, I'm still discovering things <laughs> that was, in that my collection. That was my follow-up questions, are you still yeah. discovering things? I'm things? still discovering things, and, and let me put it this way, there's a good side to this story and a not so good side. If I, had I not met Elvis, I probably would have gotten married and have three kids by now and be a grandfather. But unfortunately, the, the, once you get involved with a character like Elvis, who first gets discovered after he dies, and now the, the world is knocking on your door, they keep you so busy, uh, either doing books or, or doing exhibits or what have you, that you forget about your personal life and you say, well, my life is here to be dedicated to Elvis Presley. Uh, and then you say, what a fool you are, I'll live your own, you know, get a life. Uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, I'm known as the Elvis Presley photographer. So it, when I was in China, they couldn't pronounce my name, Wertheimer, that was totally strange to them. But they said, uh, Elvis, they called me Elvis. Well, I'm not Elvis, but that's what they recognized. So it, it's, uh, it's, it's a I've got a question. Problem. Let me also add, with, let me, uh, your question, but I wanted to add that after we made the choices, Alfred had to approve the choices. I'm not sure that was clear. It was a complete collaboration. You had a I saw the uh, gallery, I saw Elvis with his mother. Yes. And it was very interesting. What was the relationship? Well, Did she loved... Did you ever her mo the mother and the father? Well, I'll tell you how close the relationship was. After Elvis came uh, back from this 27-hour train trip, and he needed a new pair of underwear, clean ones, she gave him a fresh pair of jockey shorts, and Elvis gave her a kiss which was a fair exchange, don't you think? <laughs> uh, of course, he had to go on stage that night. No, he loved his mother. She was very close to him. I, I think it decimated him uh, uh, where, where uh, when he was in the Army, uh, somewhere around May of uh, 58, she died. She died very young. She died at the age of 45. He died at the age of 42. Can you imagine? I met him when he was 21, and 21 years later, he's dead. I mean, there's something to be said about not living that kind of life. So, uh, so he was very sad, and of course, then along comes Priscilla a few months later. Oh, uh, yeah, and then he gets married. Ultimately, stays married for a short period of time. Has a daughter, and um, and um, what can I say? I mean, that Priscilla was up in my house. Uh, about six, seven months ago, she went to see more of my collection. 
and I promised her several books, several prints, which I haven't delivered yet, so don't ask me to send you books because I, <laughs> not that we trust. What did she say about the photographs, Alfred? Did but she, she loves them, she loves them. I, that, and uh, she's glad that somebody took them. But you know, she she was um, she was married to him for uh, well for a very short period now, five six years. I mean, I I'm not sure exactly. Uh, and uh, they had a little Lisa Marie come along exactly nine months to the day after they got married. So they did have at least one very hot day of romance. <laughs> yes, sir. Did he ever turn the tables on you? Who? You know, after having your photograph 2,500 times, did he ever grab the camera and... No, and it, it, our, we, had a, we had a standing relationship where if he winked at me, I would give him more space. But you see, uh, besides, did I tell you that Elvis made the girls cry? That was a very important thing. You see, you can, you can get the girls to jump and scream and yell and carry on, but to make them cry, to me was so, you know, the cynical New Yorker that I was, especially down south, you see these girls in their teens holding on to each other, letting the mascara run down their face in a darkened theater, and, and getting a, a total, call it a sexual experience, while Elvis is falling apart on stage. He comes on stage, every hair is in place. He leaves the stage, every hair is out of place. And he sort of shows them how to fall apart on stage. And they're falling apart in the audience. And they're so honest with each other that it becomes uh, a religious or sexual experience. I didn't know. And I said, Al, you're too stupid to understand all this, but keep photographing. Uh, later on, some psychiatrist will work it out and it you'll find honest. out what you did. It was honest. It was rock and roll. Yeah. I'm sorry that we can't finish the slides here, but every image that Alfred was going to show today yeah. is in the gallery. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for joining us oh, tonight.